Check one, two, one, two. Check, 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 check. We're good. Come on in, guys. How's everybody doing today? Today's gonna be a fun live stream. We're gonna be jumping inside of Unity, and we're gonna be, well, just sprinting, 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 because we have some deadlines that we gotta hit uh, for our publisher, Twisted Tower, and or our not, the game is called Twisted Tower. The publisher is called 3D Realms. So we have some very, very fun, just a big old list, a big old list of things to work on. So we're just gonna hang out. We're just gonna hang out, guys. So see you on the other side. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first thing we want to do is jump inside of Unity. One of the big problems, and I get to show you guys some new updates for the game. It's coming along splendidly. Um, let's scrub through this first section here. All right, so what we wanna do is, I just like to create a little testing area because what we're gonna do today is make sure all of our weapons are easy to spot. One of the problems that we're having with the demo, excuse me, one of the problems we're having with the demo is that, and we're working on the demo right now, spoiler alert, is the weapons are not easy to see. Um, so you can miss them, and I also think I wanna make them auto-collect, okay? So we're gonna make it so that the weapons that you usually press the interact button to collect, we're just gonna automatically give them to the player because we really don't want the player to miss it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and just uh, put all of our weapons on the ground, okay? It's really helpful to sort of set up your scene and uh, see all of the assets that you're gonna be working on. Come on in, come on in, welcome. How you doing, Flyburn504? Ezio Auditor, how you doing? Theraputty Dave, Togla, Jason, love it. Come on in, guys, welcome. Ooh, we got some people on Twitch. Good morning, DJ Denau and Marcel <laughs> says, I love your streams, that's awesome. Sorry if I you know, messed up your name there. Okay, so we got some pickups here for our weapons. Let's see here. They're not named perfectly, but let's just go ahead and lay them all out. That's that's not right. That's wait, it, no, that is right. Okay, it's on the ground. <laughs> all right, let's just lay out all of our weapons on the ground. And what we want to do is make sure they're very obvious and that you can see them. So I'm going to add a real-time light to them. I think we have 10 weapons. Pistol. Why is that luck? Hang on. That's wrong. Why are you not flat? Huh? Let's double check. We have had so many problems with our weapons. There we go. I'll say that the three hardest things about making a game are pickups, enemies, and doors. Everything else, pretty smooth. What you see, the beautiful visuals of a game, obviously very difficult to achieve and you gotta understand 3D. But it's uh, the precision and the, the surgical nature of creating doors, enemies, and pickups is brutal. Because there's so many things that you can get wrong. What's the highlight system you're using for the gun? Do you want to see that? It's a screen space filter. It's called Highlight Plus. And I downloaded that from, you guessed it, Unity Asset Store. UI is tough too, I'm so sorry. Yes, <laughs> UI is brutal too. All right, let's go ahead and lay all of our weapons out here, guys. Now the problem is, is I don't think our weapons share a root prefab. So I think we have to change every single one, which sucks. Um, Magnum here. The, the reason we're doing this specifically for the weapons is because a player could get through the game without picking up a weapon. Um, 
And so some players might skip a weapon and then they're just thinking, man, this game's boring or it's too hard. Um, whereas keys and stuff, you have to get a key to get to a next area. Uh, so I don't feel like I need to highlight the keys so much because they're going to go look for it. The weapons, they don't know about the weapons. So we're going to make those highlighted. Okay. All right. Uh, DR, DR Puzzle. Doc, Dr. Puzzler says, I actually really enjoy UI work. It's quite fun for me. Okay. So we've got a Magnum. I mean, it is fun. It's just brutal. You know, we got the knife, the fast pistol. Oh yeah. Automatic. Pick up. Automatic. Also the grenades, um, let's see here, automatic. And I, th oh, chain gun. Where's the chain gun? By the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded my free uh, stuff below, I got a ton of free stuff for you. Um, let's see here, there we go. Game kit, we've got uh, some free courses below, free Training about how to secure six figures with a publisher, how to make a 3D game, tons of free stuff. No gimmicks there. Just click below and enroll. Check it out. All right. Hey, homie, did you get so good at making, how did you get so good at making games? Please answer me. I want to make a game and I want to do it alone. Hope it didn't sound too prideful or selfish. No, Bianca. <clears throat> Excuse me. That didn't sound prideful at all. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, firstly, I have a team working on this game. So there's artwork that's done by Felipe, but I also do a lot of texture work, um, and UI work and stuff like that. And the lighting and stuff are sort of a joint effort. Um, and then it's developed by three different people. Um, I'm one of them in terms of the code, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at making games, so I can answer your question. Um, you just got to make games. I think Stephen King says the best way to become a writer is to read. Um, in the case of making games, yeah, you've got to you've got to play games and you've got to make them. You're not going to be good. You're not going to be good um, in the first year. It really takes practice. Okay. So you just got to keep making games, and frankly, you've got to release games. Where's the freaking chain gun? Pick up. One freaking more automatic pickup. There we go. Okay, guys. So here's all of our freaking weapons. Now, the problem is, <clears throat> is that they don't share, I don't think they share a root prefab, which sucks. Standing pickup trigger. What is this? Okay, so that's the pickup trigger. And then there's also a box collider, which is our interact. There's two ways to pick up an object. You can you could touch it with your collider um, so that if you're standing over something, you can collect it, kind of like, I don't know, Halo. I'm thinking about Halo. Um, but I also want people to be able to point it at the object and collect it as well. Um, so I kind of feel like uh, we might be able to just add a light to the pickup trigger. You want to try it? Let's add a point light to it, zero it out, and get a perfect value here. I could be wrong, this is probably a terrible solution, but let's try it. Tasha says, um, so cool to catch you live. I'm usually at work and I miss them, but I'm so glad. I'm glad you've been so honest about your journey. Got me back into creating games. That's cool. You betcha. Okay, so first and foremost here, um, the light should probably go up. Let's go to the actual scene. Guys, it helps to see in a scene um, how things look. Now, obviously, you could see it in the context of the scene by going here, uh, normal, there you go. But I'm not sure, oh good, it shows it on the ground. Um, that's great. So let's go ahead and reset this and then just go inside. Uh, revert, revert, no, we wanna keep that. Let's go inside here, uh, save, and then we should be able to do it here. Yep, there we go, look at that. So that's why that's so important, the context here. Hey, do you have a course for game dev using Unreal Engine? Yeah, it's called Full-Time Game Dev, and Full-Time Game Dev includes Godot and Unreal and Unity. So I added that not because I'm nice, although I am kind of nice, but because no shadows. We don't need any shadows um, because, well, frankly, people are a little bit confused about whether to use Unity these days. 
And so I just wanted to make sure that the course offered all of that. Okay, so that's gonna be great. I'm struggling to see it affecting all these other ones, so let's go ahead and save it. It sucks because it's not gonna affect these. Well, it might, let's see. <laughs> Goody, okay. So all of our pickups here are now lit, pretty strong. I would argue it's a little too strong. So let's go to three, save. That way, no matter where you go in the game, even if the weapon's in a dark corner, you get to see it glowing. Okay, and I'll show you why that's so important here. If I have the knife pick up and it's in this corner over here, we really want the player to see it. We don't want them to be confused, right? So let's go ahead and try and pick them up and see if the light disables. I think we really want that to happen. So that's another one, another check. Let's hit play and take a look. All right, let's take a look here, guys. Fox8 says, will you use Unity in the future? Yes, I will. Okay, so the light is not disabling, I don't think, which is a problem. No, it's disabling. Good, okay. Let's see if it's affecting all of our other pickups. So if I pick up something from a trash can, look, you saw it fall. Okay, that's a problem. All right, so we definitely don't wanna do that. We need to do this. Oh, sadly, only with guns, which is going to be a pain in the butt, but we're going to go ahead and do it. <clears throat> so we can't have it included in this prefab here. We have to include it only in the gun pickup, which sucks, but we shall do it. Um, there, save, and I'm going to put it inside. I'm going to put it inside the rocket launcher graphic. Same here, inside the shotgun graphic. Let's go ahead and make it a prefab though. Guys, what you're observing right now is me thinking about the future. <laughs> That's really important when you're making a game. Think about the future. Um, Thomas, the UI looks beautiful in this game. Did you make this all yourself? I sure did. No, actually it was all Mid Journey. I'm kidding, I don't use Mid Journey. We use Mid Journey for, uh, or AI art. We use it for concepting purposes. It's really fast to concept, but nothing in this game is AI art. Not a thing. I used to not be fundamentally opposed to it, but I kind of am these days. I don't really like AI art. It's not something I'm a fan of. Not because I'm, ethics aside, let me turn off that light. Ethics aside, I just don't like how it looks. I don't like how it, um, how it looks. Okay, let's let's save this point light here. Uh, we're gonna put it in the. I'm gonna create an other folder, in my pickups. <coughs> and we're gonna put that there. This is gonna be called. Pickup. Point light. We're gonna drag this in here. So now, guys, why am I doing this? Who knows why I'm creating a prefab out of this pickup point light? Does anybody know? It's gonna be real time, no shadows. And who knows why it needs to be real time? Why does this need to be real time? Can anybody answer? We're gonna zero this out. And push it up here, there we go. I don't think AI is from Seth. I don't think AI are, are production ready for telling immersive stories. Yeah, I don't, they're definitely not production ready because especially with when you're thinking about the marketing of a game, um, cover art, like for example, we've worked on the cover art for our game. Um, there are so many things that are so specific to the cover art that you need to be thinking of for marketing purposes, what to include, what not to include, where the characters are, everything layered, that's a big part of why AIR isn't gonna work is because it's not layered. Um, they, they'll have something that comes out where it's layered, I'm sure, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. the reason we're using, Death Cloud, Cloud got it right, the reason we're using <clears throat> real-time lights here, uh, or prefabs, I'm sorry, is so that if I wanna make a change to a single, um,
What the heck? Why is the center point so bad? What the heck? That really sucks. But we're not going to worry about it. That sucks. Um, yeah, if we want to make a change to this real-time light, maybe make it brighter for all weapons, we can do it quickly. You don't have to go into every single weapon. The way these weapons are set up is not great right now, I'll tell you that. Uh, it's really not not great. Um, so, Because I don't want to have to do this for every single weapon. But we're almost done with the game, and so... We're trying, <laughs> I was talking to Gordon, uh, the developer, and Gordon, I don't know if you're in the chat, but he every every time he fixes a bug or he makes a new feature, he, he does it in a way that isn't, I, this is what Gordon told me, he's not going in and making this amazing system. Uh, he's rather sort of adding band-aids to things because you don't want to, you don't want to ruin the system as it stands, you know, um, it can, you just want to keep everything sort of stable. And so that's why a lot of times with software, you'll see a lot of features being added, but they, ne they never address underlying, you know, major functional systems because you don't want to break the game. <laughs> One little change will break the entire game, you know? Um, so that's why we're not really fixing stuff right now, at least at its core. Okay, there's a weapon. Good, good, good. I don't really love the glow effect these days. I don't know why. But anyway, we're almost done here. And then we'll set them to auto collect as well. Any guys that have any, uh, why not make a new prefab and refactor these pickups a bit? Well, Jason, I just answered your question. Because the game is almost done. We don't want to worry about it. That's for future games. All right, let's keep moving, guys. We're almost there. We got our grenades here. I'm going to change these. Probably in the summer, I'm going to change these grenades to fireworks. I think that'd be really funny. Um, or dynamite or something like that. Almost there, guys. And you'll notice I'm deleting some stuff as well that's just sort of sitting in the prefabs here. And so what we're doing here, we're not thinking about the beauty of the game. We're thinking about the functionality of the gameplay, you know? Um, Seth says, thanks for the tip. I always stuck in system architecture design when I start making a game. So my games are never finished. And that's, that's honestly, that's a, I appreciate you being willing to admit that. Um, it's something that a lot of game developers struggle with, which is you're going to grow as a game developer. And that means that you're always going to find problems. Every, new, every day you wake up and you open up your project, you're going to find new issues. And you're going to be so tempted to fix those issues. But if they don't break the game and they don't affect performance, Sometimes, obviously, during the final phase of production, you're not going to want to go and fix it. Okay, so let's see if this works. Hey, Thomas, I just started working on this is from Cloudy. I just started working on my game and devlog will come out tomorrow on a new channel. Awesome. Good job. A question. Sometimes it feels like hard to do simple things like opening Unreal. Kind of discouraging. Um, well, Unreal takes forever to open, so that's your problem. No, um, I think that, let's see if this works here. I agree. I mean, ultimately, it's just hard to, I always tell myself this, it's hard to get Unity open, you're right. Like, sometimes I'll work at evenings, and it's hard for me to want to work in an evening because I'm so tired, and I've just put my kids to bed, and that's a whole event. How many of you have kids and know what I'm talking about? And so when they're finally put to bed, it's like 740. And I'm thinking, I really don't want to go back in my office and, and work some more. But I always tell myself that once you get started and get moving, it's actually really fun. It's like playing Minecraft. It really is. Okay, so that was great. And we don't have any issues with the other pickups, like that one I just collected. So we're good. All right, let's go ahead and try and set them to auto pick. Uh, excuse me. Auto pickup. Where's my freaking flashlight? 
I don't know why I don't have my... Oh, I just picked up the weapons, not the flashlight. Okay. I added this fog yesterday. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's a particle emitter. I'm thinking about adding little dust motes. Let's see if we can do that really quick. I really shouldn't be doing this right now. Dust moat. What's this? No, that's smoke. Do I have any dust motes? Let's type it in and see. No, I'm not gonna worry about it. Thomas, what are you doing? Stop it. You're a hypocrite. What do you think about the future of NPCs and video games? Will be like, I think they'll be AI. That follows story parameters, which I think is great. I love that. Jason says it's very Bioshock. You know what's funny? I really want to know the answer to this. I've never seen a Bioshock level that looks like this. Is it the, is it the art deco that makes people feel like this looks like Bioshock? I'm, I, I think it does. I just can't put a finger on it. Why does it look like Bioshock? Is it the gold? And I'm happy about that. It's just kind of weird. I can't put a finger on it. Okay, so let's see if we can do an auto pickup. Standing pickup, okay. So the standing pickup here is going to be much bigger for, there's different kinds of triggers here. Long story short, there's, there's standing pickups and then there's ones that you use a ray cast to look at the actual weapon itself and collect it with interact. Because there's two types of ways to get a, a weapon. Uh, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, can, can auto collect, it's a boolean here. Okay, you ready? Public bull, actually it's gonna be private. Private bull uh, auto trigger or auto collect on trigger. I'm very precise with my variables, by the way. I do not like clever variable names. I like long variable names that are very descriptive equals false. If What is this? Can you measure? Okay, so what we need to do here is figure out what's happening on the it, we need a what am I saying? Why is it doing this? If Auto collect on trigger. We need to go ahead and just fire that function. Dot. What do I got here? Collect. Pick up. Get pickup request. Let's try that. I doubt that that's the solution. Is that? No. Okay. Let's 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 open up the object interaction handler <coughs> and see what the script is because I haven't looked at this in a while. Get pickup request. Oh boy. If standing on pickup, where's the pickup occurring? Wow. This is crazy. It's not so easy. There's a lot going on here. And I think it's because <coughs> it's waiting for this input action here. So what I think we need to do, um, as long as we're not using the callback, we are. Okay, so it needs to be here. We're gonna grab all this here and just say pick up. And then we're gonna do public pick up and just see if this works. I want that to be an uppercase U. Void. Then we're gonna do pick up. I really don't think this is gonna work because I think we're using callback somewhere.
We'll try it. Okay, we got an issue here, and we'll just do pickup. Ready? Why are we, we got so many people joining the stream today. Welcome, welcome, 340 viewers. I feel so proud. I just recently started to watch and learn at Full Time Game Dev Course, Thomas, and I wanted to say a big, big thank you for the effort. Livio, I paid you to say this, didn't I? I wanted to say thank you. I'm just kidding. I wanted to say a big thank you for the effort to put you put into it and just shows the truth behind making games. Sweet. Hold on to your butts, says Alan. I love that. Good job. Good movie reference. What is that? Hold on to your butts. He's got a cigar. Hold on to your butt. Is that alien? Is it Jurassic Park? Okay. It was one of those older movies. The best movies, right? 1980. 1980 and 90. Okay, here we go. It worked. It worked. What about when I'm standing over it? Okay, so it's still working. So that's great news. And I can just press E, slam E as fast as I want. What is this? Hang on. Pick up what? Here we go. Goody. All right. So that works. Now let's check the auto collect. Are we ready? Standing pickup trigger. We're going to make sure we serialize this field, right? If it's private, it's not going to show up in the um, serialize field. Uh, it's not going to show up in the inspector. But if you serialize a private Boolean, it'll show up <coughs> in the inspector. Okay. Great info, this is Adaptable Fox. Great info and insight, Ben, consuming all of your videos. I enrolled in Code Academy to learn C Sharp. That's awesome. <laughs> That's right, Adaptable Fox. Um, let's see here. Seth says, is screen flashing on pickup intentional? Someone might have a seizure with that. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's auto collect the, the rocket launcher and see if this works, okay? Ready? Yay! Ha ha, Thomas, you win. You are a great person, Thomas. Wow, you're smart and a genius. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump into every freaking pickup and set them to auto collect, okay? That was all we needed to do. I mean, if it, this is my honest opinion, if that's going to give you a seizure, you probably shouldn't be playing first person shooters. You know? And I, I, no, that's all I'm going to say. But maybe I should remove it just for pickups. You might be right about that. But I do have like lightning and stuff that flashes in the game. <clears throat> Thomas's knowledge, y'all are just, uh, Nurturing my ego today. Thank you. Thomas's knowledge uh, Helped me figure out how to get funding for games. What yeah, what was what exactly did you do there? Did you get it? Did you get funding? Gil tell me more. I want to hear your story. Did you get funded? I'm asking you to continue to nurture my ego. We have two stand-up pickup pick triggers for grenades. We don't want that. Okay. I don't know why that was the case. Let's see how big that uh, auto pickup is. Uh, Excuse me. Excuse me. Good, okay. So let's see if they all collect automatically. Okay. Not 
that one. Oh my goodness, that feels amazing. <coughs> Are you turning on auto collect for all weapons or is that going to be a user setting? I personally wouldn't want to pick up everything I walk over. Uh, Fight Milk Hero, this is only for weapons and here's the thing. This is my justification and I wanna hear what you guys think. All pickups in the game you have to actually collect with an interact button. However, it's kind of like Doom, where if you pick up a weapon, you have that weapon forever. And there's only one opportunity to get that weapon. So the problem is, is that if someone passes over a weapon, they will never get that weapon ever again. And so we want to force them to get the weapon. Weapons are integral to the gameplay. There are certain enemies that require certain weapons. So I find it very, very important to ensure that they do not miss an opportunity to pick up a weapon, right? So let's take a look here and see if they all picked up. Hey Thomas, I love your video. I'm currently finding a publisher for my game. To get motivation, I rewatch all of your videos. Oh, that's awesome. Love from India. That's sweet, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so all of our weapons are easily collectible. I kind of feel like we don't need to show the pickup anymore. Um, personally, the, the pickup text, it's kind of confusing. So what I'm going to do is say, uh, do not show. The, the hover description, that's ah, fine, whatever. <clears throat> Quick pickup is, again, it's only for weapons, so everything else you have to pick up by hand. Okay, well, let's go ahead and push this to GitHub. I like to push my features after they're done because oftentimes what I'll do is I'll find myself getting derailed and I'll go work on something else and then I don't like what I did and then I'm like, wait, wait what did I change? What did I not change? What do I push and what do I not push? So let's go ahead and push weapons auto pickup. Okay. And then also, what was it? What was another one? Oh, <coughs> weapons are lit. Very good. So I'm going to push all this. And yeah, we should be good. So give me just a sec here to push. Default auto pickup in the script so you don't have to tick the box every time. No, because we have way more pickups that don't have auto pickup than do. Only weapons are auto pickup. So that's why we had to go into each weapon. Okay, that makes sense. All right, we've pushed. And by the way, guys, if you're using GitHub, never push or pull with Unity active. You can have it like minimized, just don't have it active because it's gonna re-import and export and pull. And so you're gonna have basically stuff pulling or pushing on GitHub while Unity is importing assets. This causes link breaks, linkage breaks with prefabs, and sometimes prefabs will com completely disappear. So you wanna make sure you're careful there. Okay, um, let's see here. Any questions, guys? Oh, this is great. LC says, Thomas, I'm struggling with um, how much to do in a day and was wondering how much you got done in a day compared to compare work speed. How much I do in a day, um, I'm, that's really, really hard to even answer. I work eight, nine hours a day. Um, I could tell you my schedule. Uh, I, I get up at seven or six, six, I get up at 6.30, 6.30 and I listen to a podcast or the Bible while I work out uh, for an hour and then I start my day at eight and then I go to 5.30, but I usually work pretty, I have like a 20 minute lunch, so it's usually like an eight or nine hour day. Are we using forward plus lighting? Game over, thank you for your support. Uh, yes, we are using forward plus. We are, yes. And uh, I, can, I can't give you guys too much information, but I will say that this game runs at industry standard on console, but that wasn't without some serious light baking. We had to bake some lights, and. Who knows one of the problems with light baking? Does anyone know one of the big problems with light baking? Who 
Who knows? While, while you answer my question, I'll answer your question here. Sleepless says, does it f make sense to find a publisher if someone can finish their solo game? Uh, there's several reasons why you might want to find a publisher. Um, thank you for your question, Sleepless. Um, one of the reasons is if you want to go full time and you're tired of working on your game um, in the evening or part time. So it really, really helps to have a funding funding to go full time. Publishers also really, really help with you know some publishers are great at actually telling you if the game is even marketable and if what what needs to change to make sure the game is marketable. And I'm really hopeful that 3D Realms will do that with this game. Um, and they've they've been offering feedback, but I really want them to go in and play the full game when it's ready and offer constructive feedback about what, what a first-person shooter really needs to be a successful game. Um, but they also offer, offer up marketing, obviously. That, that's a big help. And, and porting and stuff like that. Okay, um, who knows why baking is a pain in the butt? Uh, it's not really a good answer. The shadows stay even when you move objects. Well, you shouldn't be baking any shadows of movable objects. Um, but yes, that is one of them. Um, light becomes baked, so it starts acting funny. Mm, not a sufficient answer, sorry. <laughs> Baking strips specular information and metallic information. And normal maps. Why? Why does baking light strip out normal maps, metallic, and specular information? Does anybody know the reason? There's one word. It does not take too long to bake. If you set your texels to two, you should be fine. Who knows why that information is stripped? Nope. Yes, no. Because those need direction. That's right. So anything that's directional is stripped from a bake. Now, this is not true with like Blender. If you bake in Blender or Substance Painter, it takes the directional information and then it, it prints it onto um, the normal map uh, and to the specular and the metallic. Unity does not do that. Who knows why? Um, but there you go. Midlow wants me to stop asking questions. Do we agree? Oh. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a, um, we want to create a photo shoot um, scene. What's a photo shoot scene? It's a scene where we can take photo photos, screenshots and videos of all of our characters in the game so that we can create marketing material, but we can also create posters that we're gonna put throughout the tower, okay? So what I wanna do is go ahead and create a photo shoot scene. Before we do that, let's go make sure that our scenes folder is fairly cleaned up. So we have a lot of scenes here that we don't need anymore. Exterior test, we're gonna delete that. All of this stuff for floor zero, we're gonna delete that. So now all we have is our levels. And we're gonna go ahead and just, hey, duplicate this scene and we're gonna call it the photo shoot scene. And actually, I think I have one here in other. I don't like this testing. There's one here called character recording scene. I'm gonna delete that. And object screenshots. Object screenshots, I like this scene. This scene is great. I'll show it to you guys. Um, I don't know, does anybody know the answer to UE5? Um, so who knows why I have this scene here? Well, I'll just go ahead and answer your fr the freaking question because you guys don't like me to ask questions apparently. Um, <laughs> it's to be able to take screenshots and use that, that uh, green screen to cut out the object and use these objects for pickups for UI. So the same is true for, I'm gonna go ahead and save this scene as our character recording scene. Now, we could probably just get away with using this scene here, but I think I wanna have it separate. So let's go to save as, <coughs> scenes, other, and we're gonna save this as character screenshots. We're gonna save it. Now let's go ahead and delete all this stuff here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create, um, 
we don't need this. We just need a, a green skybox, actually. So we're going to go ahead and create a green skybox. Uh, green screen skybox. And this is not going to include any uh, <coughs> albedo or whatever you're going to call that. And we're just going to make it green. This is great. This is what we need. Okay, we also need a camera. I'm going to go ahead and take the camera from our character controller. Are we using Substance Painter for the game? Yes, we are. And it's called Substance now, so they got rid of the painter. I've never seen a green scheme in a game. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is there's no way to export a transparent image. So you have to do a green screen. Unless I'm fully mistaken here, that's I've never found the ability to like export an image or a or a or a graphic as a PNG. Oh yeah, you're right. We don't need a we don't need a skybox. We just need to set it to well actually I think we might. Let's double check. I'm gonna double check that. Okay, let's grab this camera and stick it here and then just delete all this stuff here. So now we have our camera. Um, we're gonna set that to zero and then it's rotation to zero. I kinda wanna know a good spot to put our objects. So I'm just gonna create a big old cube here. I like to have a reference point. We're gonna do 100 by 100 by 100, or I'm sorry, by 100 by one. We could, I guess we could have done a quad, but it doesn't matter, guys. So there is our floor, just so we can drag the characters into the onto the floor. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the camera here. If we set it to solid color and then green, it's still a problem because I want to be able to take screenshots from the skybox uh, from the scene as well. So that's why that's a problem. So we're gonna do the skybox instead. But that was you're you're right. Generally, it's just I want to be able to take screenshots from the scene view, and I'll tell you why in a sec. Okay, so there's our green, and the theory is um, we can make this floor. Uh, let's see here. Where are our materials? Oh good, I have another folder here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a, um, a material here that's <coughs> a slightly different green. Um, sorry, I think Unity changed their, their menus. Green screen. And then we're going to do a slightly different green. We're going to make it unlit. And so now, look, we can generally see where the floor is. And now, guys, now we can go ahead and bring in all of our characters, OK? Um, the problem with this is that Let's see what all, all of our NPCs are. We have Tiny. Okay, let's see how he looks. If we hit play. Okay, good. We need to make his weapons not on the first person shooter. Tiny has the worst rig. Um, he's not looking great, but if we get close ups, we'll be all right. Um, all of these weapons here, we need to make sure that these are set to not first-person shooter weapons. So let's go ahead and swap those out. Those need to be default. Good. And um, I kind of, man, guys, I, 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 I'm trying to think here what I want to do. Some of the NPCs are different than others. So like Tiny, our, our main character, Mr. Twister and Charlotte, they're gonna, they have eyes. So you can like, they're gonna point their eyes in various directions. So yeah, they have an editor to look at target here. So if I hit play here, you can see that he's gonna follow this, right? But let's go ahead and change out his, uh, you know, do we have any global animations? I think we do. Let's double check that. 
I'm going to create an animator with all of our various stances. But I'm not going to worry about Tiny or Charlotte right now. I'm just going to put them in the scene. <sighs> They're just different. They're different characters. If we hit play here for Charlotte, she should follow her editor look at target as well. Yeah, she does. So you can see here, we could, we could position that and then take a screenshot of her like this, right? But here's the thing, guys. Lighting is so important. That's why this is we're calling this like a photography studio. We're going to have our cool lights that we can position. And I'll show you guys all about lighting a character. You can light a... this. The characters currently look pretty bland, right? Um, and also, by the way, if we turn off the lighting here, turn down the intensity multiplier, um, and turn off the... Yeah, that's what we want. We don't want any environment lighting. I don't know where that light's coming from, though. Oh, we have a directional light. We don't want a directional light either. Okay. So let's set both of these to zero, zero. We'll position the camera somewhere like uh, here. We'll do zero, zero, negative 15, maybe. Why didn't that work? Oh, it's because we have a cinema machine brain, and we're going to remove that. There we go. All right. Okay, so Charlotte and Tiny. Let's move them both to the same spot. Why on earth do you keep... There we go, there we go. All right, so we're going to put these guys right here. So I just want to be able to enable one, you know. Um, so there's those two. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding my enemies. Now, what I think I'm going to do, all of my enemies are <clears throat> inside of one object, which is awesome. I love it. And then they delete uh, on load. So we're going to go ahead and grab... Actually, I think on the menu we have this. I'm going to save this scene. Are you still changing engines? No, we're not going to change our engine. It's not worth it. Okay, so we have NPC t Teddy. Oh, good, and we can change out all the graphics. Yay. You know, it's still not including all of our new graphics, so what we need to do is actually go to our character scene that we were just in. There we go. And I'm going to drag in the Walker game object. This is, the, this is our game object that includes every single uh, enemy in the mesh. Now it doesn't include the spider though. So we need to drag in the spider as well. Okay, there's our walker. So what we have to do here is we're going to create a variant of it that removes all functionality. And all that's going to happen is he's just going to animate. We'll restore the animator though. And then the game event listener. Okay, what else? Turn off that. We don't want any decals. And then all the audio sources. I wonder if we can just... No, it's fine. We're going to keep it. I was going to unpack it, but we're not going to unpack it. Remove the variations. We don't need the foot dust. The new One of the newer versions of Unity allows you to delete stuff from a prefab, which is great. You can use Unity Recorder to export PNGs with Alpha. Really? Let's take a look. I tried it and it didn't work. I don't see any image here. We can do an image sequence. But I don't see that. PNG. I don't see any Alpha channel available to me. Does anybody have any information there? Okay, let's go ahead and go to our <coughs> armature here. And you'll notice we have this ragdoll script. We're going to remove that. All these functions. Remove, remove, remove. Now, the sad part is the armature here has all these ragdoll stuff. So we're going to remove all the ragdoll elements. It's going to take a while. So hang tight, guys. 
Gotta go through each child. Good. What we wanna be able to do <clears throat> is we wanna be able to take a bunch of different Mixamo animations. And frankly, I wish I could just download the whole set. Uh, bring them into the project and then create an animator that allows us to tick on which animation plays. So we'll do all of that in just a minute here. All right, guys. Uh, I am Lord Starbuilder says, with a well-designed engine, you can repurpose it for future games. Yep, just takes five years to make, and then you got to port it to how do you how do you even port to console? You know, um, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Well, I am gonna say it's a bad idea. For most people, it's a bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm gonna remove the look at constraint for now. Uh, animal masks, we're gonna at least disable them. And then remove all this crap here. And then we're gonna make sure we save this prefab as like something like enemy. Unfunctional enemy or non functional enemy or something like that. You know what I really don't like is that I can't figure out how to get Unity to just play a single animation as opposed to always requiring the animator fun uh, animator component. It really bugs me. Okay, so we have this here. We have our animator. We're going to bring that back. So he should, yeah. Good. <coughs> and then we can swap out all the, <coughs> we'll, we'll add light in a sec. We have all of our different enemies here. So, goody, 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 goody. Okay, that works. Let's hit play and just make sure that it, all it should do is animate. We shouldn't get any errors. Okay, we got a lot of errors. Post-processing, enemy sense ray caster. We need to delete that. We have post-processing issues. I think that's because we don't have a post-processing volume. Um, so let me let me double check. We're gonna go to floor zero here, and, and you know I don't even know if I want to add post-processing. I might I might do it, but maybe add remove the bloom because bloom causes a, a, an effect to go around the enemy, and it's hard to get a green screen working. Okay, so let's look for our volume. There it is. We're gonna drag that into our <coughs> character screenshots. There's our volume, and we're gonna create a new one called Character Screenshots Profile. Um, actually, I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna create. We're gonna duplicate the one. Where is it? Interior. There it is. Duplicate. We're gonna call this Character Screenshots. So now we can drag this in here, like that. And character screenshots, I know right away I don't want Bloom. I also don't want a vignette. No color adjustments. Tone mapping I do like, film grain remove. You know what, we don't even need one except for tone mapping. But let's go ahead and save this, guys. If you're making a whole new engine just for that, it seems a bit pointless. Well, you know, if you wanna learn and maybe sell it, that would be cool. You know, Godot had to, someone started Godot. I just, if you wanna make a game though, I don't quite get it. Okay, let's do three point lighting. Okay, here's three point lighting, you guys ready? You put one here, and what you want is you want, I've got it working right here actually, I've got a light here, okay? You guys can't see it, all right? Look at where the light's coming from. How do I look? We have a light coming from here. And in fact, let me drop down my blinds really quick and you'll see it look better. So let's wait for the blinds. We have like the most viewers ever. 
What in the world? Why are we watching me? What? Are, we're not even doing anything. Um, okay, this, it's gonna look a lot better. Hang on, hang tight, guys. Dev Destiny is asking what we're making. We're making a character screenshot scene so that we can make screenshots of all of our characters for marketing material, but also for in-game posters and in-game paintings in this theme park. Okay, so what we've got is I've got a, what's called a key light right here, and it hits one side of my face while the other side should be shadowed, okay? It's called a key light. It's, it's the brightest, sort of hottest, broadest light you have. Then you have some kind of rim light. In my case, I've got a hair light on my ceiling. It's attached to the ceiling to the uh, tube, the whatever the tube of fours in the ceiling. Then I've also got uh, colored lights on the walls over here. And those create different colors, contrasted colors. I've got a blue one over here, a purple one over here. It's not perfect in my studio. I'm still working on it but those create colors on both sides, creating rim light behind the character, okay? And you could have a fill light over here. My fill light is my monitors. They fill in my face just a little bit. You might see a little bit of green on my face right here. So you're gonna, we're gonna use the same principles in a game, okay? All right, here we go. Crank this up. Warm. Do a little bit of warmth, crank up the intensity. And you know what I want? I want something in the background just to see what it could look like. So let's do that, okay? Let's go to floor zero. Uh, yeah, we're gonna grab a screenshot from floor zero. <clears throat> Simron said, all publishers rejected my game. Well, do you wanna be encouraged? All pu publishers rejected um, uh, one of my games recently. I won't say which one, but I didn't get a single bite. Um, and that's, you know, that's, guys, that's what happens. Okay, let's just take a screen. Oh my goodness, we should not have saved this. What are we doing? Oh, Thomas. Okay, so we're just gonna take this here, guys. And we're gonna take a screenshot and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna open up Photoshop. It's okay to get rejected, guys. It means you're it means you've been rejected, and a ton of other game developers haven't even tried. So you're already this much closer. I need you to think about failure that way. It's really, really helpful, okay? You got rejected, and a lot of other game developers haven't even tried. Let's paste in that screenshot, guys into Photoshop. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna get just a general color palette here. And we just wanna have this just so we can get a good reference point. This is not gonna be included, <clears throat> this is not gonna be included in, um, see that? Uh, this is not, <laughs> Thomas, what are you saying? This is not gonna be included in uh, the uh, final screenshots, but it's helpful, especially with lighting, to get a, an idea of like whether your lights look realistic, I guess. Um, let's go to our assets here, art. I'm just gonna save it in the other folder. It's one of my favorite folders. Uh, character screenshots, backdrop, reference. I'm very descriptive. All right. Hey, Thomas, when do you know your prototype is ready to show on Kickstarter or to publishers? Well, if you think it's the best you can possibly do, that is what it is. It's ready to go then. And what I mean by that is your prototype should not be kind of cool. It needs to be perfect, but 10 minutes long. It needs to be absolutely perfect. The best you can possibly do, that's what your prototype should be. Aren't you guys glad I have this little plane here, so now I know that I can go to it. Otherwise, you can get lost in the void. You're like, where am I? Oh, no. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and create a uh, I'm going to see if I have something called a firmament collider, and it's, in, it's an inverted sphere, and I can take this and I can drag in the screenshot uh, backdrop, and it should 
if I set this properly, why is that green? Oh, it's because it's uh, reflecting the skybox, I believe. Go to Universal Render Pipe Pipe Unlit. It should. Oh, it's not unwrapped properly. That stinks. I was hoping that it would be a nice inverted sphere. Well, you know, maybe. Let's see here. Let's set it to point or maybe 20 by 20. How about 8 by 8? How about 4 by 4? And let's remove the fog. No fog. Yay. Okay. Floor here, we're going to disable. That looks like absolute crap. Okay, so we're not going to use this uh, firmament collider. We're going to use a... Yes, yes, I know we could use a skybox. Um, I guess we could. But we're going to do a quad. We're going to put it right here. Really big quad here. Drag that in. And just do a freaking huge quad. And this helps us see, turn off the fog, Thomas. This helps us see how our lighting looks. This is gonna be huge on this side, okay? This is temporary. And it just helps us see if our lighting is correct. We'll disable this and keep our quad, look at that. So, and also let's set it to, why is it not? Yeah, the resolution sucks, but whatever. Let's, let's, let's scale it down. All right, good. So we'll be getting close-ups like this. Uh, set it to negative 90, zero, zero. I like things to be very precise. All right, guys. So now we can see how the lighting looks. Okay, let's get back to our three-point lighting. You guys ready? So this is our key light. So far, so good. Look at how boring that looks. Do you guys see why we put it at an angle? It's also called Rembrandt lighting. Okay, so there's that. Now let's go ahead. <clears throat> and add a backlight. To one side. Look at this. And why are we doing this? It's always good to think about how do I separate my character from the background? And that's what a, a, um, a rim light's gonna do. So we'll do a rim light on the right side here. Rim light right and rim light left, but we'll use competing colors. So in this case, we're gonna do like a purple, or I'm sorry, a green. And then in this case, we're gonna do a orange, vibrant orange. Crank up the intensity, drop down the range. And there you go. So here is why we're doing this, okay? Here's the key light. And then imagine if the key light was right here. So there's that. And then there's this. Do you see why we did that? Okay, so far so good. Um, I'm not gonna do tune shaders, despite the fact that it would it would probably look more. <coughs> do we wanna use tune shaders? It's just not worth it. Yep. And let's throw on some shadows. Okay, all right, I didn't realize those were off. All right, if we go to our key light here, move it over a little bit, that's much better. More, more, more of a Rembrandt look there. There we go. Adjust the strength just a tad, all right? And then maybe bring the range down a little bit. There we go. Good, Thomas. I like that. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and throw in the proper one though. I believe it's this one. Yeah, that one's better. Okay, 
So next we want to be thinking about all the different enemies. So let's scrub through all of our enemies. We have a default enemy with blue hair, <laughs> apparently. We have our no hair enemy type. Good. Now you notice that we don't have any bloom. And that's a problem because our emissives for the eyes don't look very good. But that's okay, we can do that in, in Photoshop. But let's go ahead and get the bloom looking good because we might want to do some videos, which we won't be doing transparent stuff with. So we won't need a green screen. That one looks really good. That one might need to be, we might need to move the key light a little bit. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Well, we need some anim animations, okay? All right, so our current animation set is called Walker Animator Controller. And by the way, let's create a new prefab out of this. We're gonna put this in Other. This is gonna be called Walker for screenshots. Actually, let's call it, let's be a little bit more, I love being uh, as vague as possible so that we can use it in other areas. Outside of screenshots, like I might just want a static enemy on the ground. Um, and actually, let's make sure, yeah. So we're gonna call it Walker Functionless. And drag it into other folder. It's a variant, because if we add other meshes, because we will be adding more enemies, uh, you want it to pr properly update here. Hey Thomas, this is from Colin, or this is from Colin. Hey Thomas, whenever I start working on my game, it's can we get 500 viewers? I would love that. How, can we get 500 viewers? Y'all stick around and just stay put so that you can uh, make me feel better about myself. Whenever I start working on my game, it's really easy for me to get super overwhelmed, which leads me not knowing what to start on. Any advice on delegating specific tasks for yourself? Yeah, use a project management system. But it's really hard to delegate tasks to yourself if you've never made a game before. So oftentimes you're gonna feel lost until you've done it. And every game is different, right? So a first person shooter that's 3D, I would approach it totally different now, now that I've actually done it. And so the next project that's 3D, a first person, if I do a first person shooter that's 3D, it's gonna be so much easier for me to build the house properly, right? Like a contractor of a home, he's not gonna lay carpet before he lays the foundation. You're not gonna put the roof on before you've, I don't know, or put the siding on before you put the roof on, right? There's an order to things and it's hard to know the exact order unless you've done it. But a project management system is awesome, like clickupmonday.com or Trello. All right, let's go ahead and create a new animation. Uh, we're gonna call this Walker Functionless, okay? I don't actually think I wanna do that. I, I, would, I just really, really wish that you could just put an animation on here. If I were to remove that and just put an animation component, the problem is it doesn't play. Let's hit play and see what happens. Look at that, he doesn't play. On state enter. Object reference not set to an object. I think I need to add the animation here to an animation list. And also you'll notice that his arm was falling there. So he didn't do his right arm. Did you see that? That's crazy. I think it was his left arm. Oh yeah, it's his left shoulder. There we go. Remove, remove. And then all that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna apply all those changes. <coughs> Excuse me, and then we're gonna remove this controller here. We don't need that. Also constant force, we don't need that. We don't need that, we don't need that. Why is that added? Apply, okay. Now there's our idle animation. So let's hit play and see what happens. Look at that, who knows why? Why, does anyone know, I, I've, I've been trying to figure this out for probably 17,000 years. Why don't, doesn't the animation component play automatically? Play the animation, it's not hard. That's the one I want.
Do I make? Do I focus on making a game or make a game that others want to play? I'm just confused. Raja, I have a perfect answer for you. Before you make your game, if you're interested in making money, okay, if you want your game to sell, what I want you to do is I want you to think of your game's hook at the very, very beginning before you start anything. Write down your hook. It helps to think about your hook in terms of a trinity. So what are your visual hooks? Or what's your singular visual hook? What's your mechanical hook and what's your story hook? Hooks are things that really catch attention. Test this hook on social media. See if people find it interesting. Test it with your family and friends. If you say, my hook is it's a game about a bar of soap that can fly. If nobody gives you ideas or says, ooh, what if you did this? Or what if you did that with that? Or their eyes don't light up, it's not a good hook. A great hook, people's eyes light up. For example, what if you said, my hook is you have a gun and it shoots portals and then you can run through that portal. If people go, oh, what if you did this? You could do puzzles with that or this kind of puzzle. What if you could actually fall through a, a portal on the ground and it launches you through the ceiling? Or what if you jump through a portal after going like 20 meters down and then you launch upward, right? There's all these ideas that come from a great hook. Hooks grow ideas quickly. A good hook will grow ideas quickly. That's the first thing you need to do. Then what you do is you take your, your personality, what you love, what you really enjoy, and you incorporate it into the hook. So it becomes both. It's marketable, it's for a consumer, because the hook is good, but you then take what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and that's the flourish or the dressing that you put onto the hook. Does anyone know why this is happening? You need to set your idle animation in the animator. I just did. I just did. Why doesn't this animation play? Does anyone know? Why on earth does this animation not play? <sighs> it's so annoying. So your rig needs to be set to legacy on the import. Need to activate debugger mode and go to the animation, then click legacy. That sucks. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's try that. Thank you. Let's make sure this isn't screwing up our enemies on in the game, okay? So we need to make sure we test to be sure this isn't screwing up the enemies. No, I don't want to do it that way. I want to be easily swap out animations. All right, let's go ahead. I don't want to use the animator. It's too much of a pain in the butt uh, because you have to create a whole freaking tree and I don't want to do that. Okay, let's test, ready? Okay, it broke. Definitely broke. So we're gonna need to create an animator. Okay, let's go, this is the benefit, guys. This is the benefit of having uh, GitHub. <coughs> we're gonna discard our changes to the animation. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Alexa, fan on. Um, let's see here. We're gonna discard all those. Make the animation controller in a single state. I wanna easily swap animations though. T-posing enemies just rushing towards you is honestly pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go back to Unity and make sure that fixed it, okay? Oh boy, that's not good. Looks like our anima animator, uh, look, they're not on legacy mode, but this one is. Oh boy, we got a problem. Look at that. You can see it there. So I wonder if we need to go to the animator controller and discard those as well. 
Oh boy. It really shouldn't be doing that now. I don't know why it did that. Let's go back to, let's go to floor one here and try it there. I don't wanna create a controller just for this though. That's the thing, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I just wanna be able to drag the animation in and have it play for the photography. What about this guy, is he dancing properly? Okay, he's dancing properly. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with these walkers. Look at this. Let's get out of debug mode. There we go. I don't get it. <coughs> For some reason, the enemies are remaining deposed. Where'd you go, buddy? Crap. Is there an error that's occurring? Because I'm looking on GitHub and there's no changes. And let's get rid of this, by the way. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, create a simple script that plays the animation as you drag in. Okay, somebody get ChatGPT to do that. Let's delete this. I have no idea why this is happening. There's, I'm looking on GitHub, there's like no changes to the, to the Walker prefab at all. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, look, I'm looking at GitHub, there's nothing. That really sucks. Because I want to push this stuff. really effed up everything, didn't it? That's crazy. Let's re-import him. Let's see the animation and see what happens. There's our armature. Look, look. Okay, there's no animation. Oh my word. Animations aren't showing up here for some reason. I think we need to refresh all of our animations. Look, 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 look. We need to go to debug mode, turn off legacy, go back to normal and then refresh these. Cause I, I should be able to see them right here, but I can't, isn't that crazy? Got some metadata issues. Look. If I go to the armature here, look, idle isn't even playing. Oh my word. Did we just lose all the uh, animation data? No? What? I am. I am clicking on the object with the animator. Re-import them. Gracious. Re-import all the animators. Look, broken text PPT, PPTR. Local identifier doesn't exist. Oh boy. See, I don't know, it's not, it should show up on GitHub and it's not. Let's close Unity and open Unity. That's always the best solution. See, but that's the thing, right? You know, I'm looking at GitHub, there's no changes. So it's, I think it's a Unity issue. Yeah, I think closing and reopen will solve the problem. When in doubt, close Unity and restart. Oh. 
You can undo your animations and any controllers and it will be good. Tim Horton says, I have 200,000 emails. W targeted to what? What are they, what's their, are they warm? Are they, what are they targeted to? Do they know you personally or are they just targeted to something? Let's bring our walker back in. Yeah, they're not showing up on Git. That's the problem, these changes. So if we if we can see the animation here, yep. There we go. All right, so we're good. Hey, bud. Okay, we're good. Okay, let's write a script. Yeah, this works, by the way. We got it working. We're gonna write a script, but we're gonna use ChatGPT. Just a sec, guys. I don't want you to see all my ChatGPT prompts. Um, hold on one sec, no, I'm just signing in here. All right, write me a C-sharp Unity script that will play a, an animation clip on with an animator component that's about all we need good grief it's using a string for an animation clip Instead of using a string for the animation clip name, I'll show my screen in just a sec, guys. I want to drag an actual animation into the inspector. Sure, you can modify the script directly, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. <clears throat> there we go. All right, we got the script. All right, let's go ahead and create this. Um, I know we have animator functions. We have a script called animator functions. I love this script. We're gonna go ahead and create another one called C Sharp uh, Animation Player. I'm gonna call it Simple Animation Player because I like to be very descriptive. What's wrong with using a string though? I don't want to have to look up what, or let me try again. That's a great question. I don't want to have to look up what the name of the animation is. I want to drag in the animation. All right, here we go. Let me paste this in. And that's it, that's what ChatGPT gave us. Let's scrub through and make sure it's correct. I don't need this crap. That's it, that's all we need. All right, let's go to Unity here, that's gonna work. Let's go to screenshots. Don't save. All right, hey bud. <coughs> I'm having fun today, guys. Are you guys having a good time? We've got 500 viewers, 504 viewers. Can I get a round of applause? That means applause emojis. What are you doing? Come on. One thing with Godot that bothers me is the heavy reliance on strings. Yep. Godot is great until you want to actually, you know, release on console. But maybe they've changed it, you know? Maybe they've changed it. Okay, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna remove that, we're gonna add an animator, animator, and we're gonna go ahead and bring in our, let's actually bring this back really quick, I wanna find, where's my character controller? Our 
are my animations. I'll spot it when I see it. There we go. All right, so Walker functionless animation controller, or just controller. And it's just gonna include the ability to play any of these animations. We'll, 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 we'll grab some dancing ones. Oh, we do have some dancing ones. Yay, good. So we're, we're almost done here, actually. Um, Uh-oh. There we go. We're gonna add our animator, simple animation player. Uh, we're gonna make sure that this doesn't have anything in it. Yeah. So this, actually, we just need a blank one. Walker uh, functionless controller. Just a blank one, you know? Um, and that should do it. Let's do idle and see what happens. You guys ready? Here we go. Doesn't work. Does it need a default on there? Let's try that. Because that's that's working only because I just added it. So let's see if we can drag in a different one. Look, it can't do it. I think it's because <clears throat> we need all of them in there. Maybe. Let's drag them in. There we go. And I want to set it to loop. Let's see if we can do that. Can we set an animation to loop? Can you also add a line of code that sets the animation clip to loop? Wrap mode, good. All right, so we got that. By the way, you guys are watching how to use ChatGPT effectively. I'm giving you great information here. All right, let's try that. Ready? I'm making a first person shooter horror game and I want to make you as an Easter egg in it. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Why is this not working? not wrapping my chats not showing up properly okay you ready here we go so now he should jump on a loop but he's not eh Why? <coughs> hmm. We'll put this in start for sure. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. Yeah, we need to put that in start. Uh, yeah, I don't know why this isn't working here. <laughs> Calling play every frame? I, I still don't think that's the issue. Yeah, he's not looping. Why are you not looping? <coughs> let's, let's ask ChatGPT.
Okay, so apparently we have to write a function here. Okay, let's add this in and see what happens. You ready, guys? It doesn't matter that it plays an update, by the way. Doesn't work, buddy. Hmm. Well, I liked the simpler script. Let's go back to it. Well, you know, things like jumping don't really need a loop in most cases anyway. I, I wish we could. Um, do we do we know why this an, why we can't set an animation to loop in play mode? Because I don't want to do it here. I'd rather it just do it by default. Let me let's Google it. How's that? Let's go old school. Set an animation to loop with script in runtime. Accessing loop time through a Boolean. Ah, I think you have to access the animation. Oh, really Unity? Goodness. This is so dumb. I tried this, but it doesn't show any difference. I don't want to do it that way. I don't want to set the it in the inspector. I want to set it with the script. <coughs> oh! There's an idea. If you go to the animations, you have to set each one. Unity sometimes is so freaking dumb. Just, I just want it to loop. Look at this. Wow. No, I don't want to change the animations because that's for the that's for the enemies and they some of them aren't supposed to loop. Go to the animation and blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. I want to do it with script. Set an animation clip to loop with script in runtime. Good grief, you have to do it in the editor. Yeah, I think we have to create duplicates of the animations, sadly. Um, we're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call this uh, animations functionless, or animations looped. I'm gonna really be specific here. Animations for character screenshots. We're going to add all these over. The dancing ones, same thing. I think we should have enough, honestly, for the photo shoot. I don't think we need to download any more from Mixamo. Okay, so there we go. 
And now all these are set up properly. Set it to loop. And then go back to our armature or animator here. Delete all these. Drag in the new ones. <clears throat> and then that should be it. Okay. Um, and now we just drag in the new one. So let's say we wanted to do a Samba. Save it and it should loop. There we go. So notice how he goes in and out of the light, right? Um, I have a theory that instead you should be putting the lights inside of the face of the object, okay? So inside of the various spine points. So I'm gonna put the key light in his head. I'm gonna put the rim light on his shoulder. Is that his left shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> and then this rim light on his right shoulder. Why are we doing this? So that the light always stays the same. Now we're seeing some strange stuff with the rim light. Why does he have a not a, he doesn't have a normal map. Why do you not have a normal map? Wait a second, where's your normal map, bud? What? We got some issues here. He doesn't have a normal map. Normal maps aren't showing up in our renderer. Okay, there's his normal map. Let's hit play again. Where is your normal map, buddy? In play mode, the normal map is getting stripped. We are having issues today, guys. What about the duck? Guys, what is happening? Look, all of my materials, they don't have their metallic map, they don't have their shiny smoothness map in play mode. Um, I have no idea. That's crazy. Look, guys, when you enter play mode, the normal maps disappear. What? And that rim light we need to put inside of his... I feel like we need to put all of it inside of his head. That might be a better option. Let's try this. Yeah, there we go. That way we can pause it and we'll always have a pretty shot. But the normal maps are gone. Disable the lights and try again, huh? It could be that the lights are animating and that's the reason, let's try. That's crazy. I've never seen this happen. It's not, I don't think it's a URP. The normal map is stripped. Let's go to floor one and see what happens. Or floor zero. And see if it's a scene specific issue, you know? Could be. Could it be the camera? No. See what happens in play mode on this scene, because it, it could be a Unity glitch. No, we got a normal map there. Let's add in the enemy and see what happens. No, he's got normal maps. What about our, the teddy bear? That's crazy. I have never seen that happen before. Uh, Walker pistol. 
Maybe it's only related to this. Uh... Okay, I see normals there. Maybe it's only related to the scene. <clears throat> yep, got normal maps here. So it's only in this scene. Isn't that weird, guys? Let's delete the camera. I'm glad we're doing this, though, because we, we really need this. Um, no, I agree that the, the normal map shouldn't change, but we still should have a normal map. <gasps> okay, so there's his shine. Okay, we're good. Apparently, we needed to close... <laughs> what? <laughs> close the scene. All right, so let's test this out and see if this is what we need, guys. Okay, so we'll disable this. And now what we do is we take a big old screenshot like this. And then we open it up in Photoshop. And we should be able to just get rid of that green. And now we have the ability to create some cool stuff. All right. Enemies are good to go. Um, does, does that make sense what we're doing here, guys? Charlotte. Ah, got it. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can fit I don't think we can, but we're gonna try and fit Charlotte into this. Uh, one of you, one of you made this script for me, and I'm just forever, forever, forever grateful for this. Um, but if we type in Charlotte here, we can grab the Charlotte. We need to find where she is. There she is, Charlotte FBX, and we're gonna drag her into the graphics folder here. Um, <clears throat> she's not zeroed out properly, but that should be okay. We're gonna do a skin mesh merger. We're gonna drag in the correct model, which is the armature. And then we're gonna grab the model to adapt as her. We can merge them together, and you see that didn't do it right. So let's go ahead and try again. We're going to do this armature here. There she goes. Good. All right. So Charlotte works. Um, her eyes. <coughs> we want her eyes to follow. We're going to remove. Oh, good. We've got a mesh renderer, so we're OK. But look at that. So the eyes need to go inside of the head. No, guys, I think we just need to use the one we had. Let's just double check Charlotte here. Okay, so let's add some light to Charlotte. Um, she, there's our editor to look at target. I just don't like how she looks. Oh, she always looks like she's leaning forward or backwards. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and bring in that new controller, which is Copy component, paste component values, and she should play just fine. Yeah, there she goes. And then let's go ahead and bring in some key lights and stuff. Those key lights that we had are inside the head here. So we're gonna put them inside of Charlotte's head right here Burp. and then that actually looks close to what we need let's just start with the key light okay so the key lights over there so we need to come back and then over 
There we go. We're close. There we go, Charlotte. So she's attacking that cube now. And if we take the editor, look at target, and move it this way. Okay, so now we can pick what, what, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that script here. I made a free cam, cam in game for screenshots. So anytime you hit, I can't read that, hold on. So anytime you hit a button, it sets time scale to zero. Ooh, that's smart. Then it gives you full control over the camera and you can move wherever you want to take a screenshot. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. All right, Charlotte. So Charlotte, she can now dance. Do a samba dance. Let's see what she does. Nope, she's not doing it. Why? Why isn't she doing the samba dance? Oh, that's because ha. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one. So that's for our enemies. This is for Charlotte. Okay. So let's see if she does a little samba dance here. Very good. see if we can get a cool screenshot. So we pause the game. Now her head, you'll notice her head uh, is not properly, oh good it is, okay. All right, so let's see if we can take a screenshot. She's not rigged perfectly, um, sadly. Look at that. There we go. Let's just try that and see if this works for us. Good. Yeah, she's not uh, weight painted very well. But we'll make sure the animations aren't so extreme and we'll be fine. I wish we could fix her chin. We can't, we can't use Charlotte if her chin's going to do that. We got to fix the, the rig. Oh boy. You guys ready for this? Who's a blender expert? Who do we got? I'm gonna restart the chat really quick. Okay. Um, let's see here. Sorry, give me a sec to open up the chat. All right. The reason the chat isn't opening, let's wait for it. There we go. All right, so let's see if we can import Charlotte. She's an FBX, unfortunately, which I just don't love, but we're gonna bring her in and we're gonna try and weight paint. Only her neck should, should affect her head. Nothing else should affect her head. but we really need to be able to do screenshots of Charlotte. If we can't do screenshots of Charlotte, it's over. Charlotte.
world. Let's try again. Where are you? That was February 8th. Okay, we're getting a freezing with Charlotte. Hmm. Charlotte is freezing for some reason. Paste, replace, open up Blender, try again. We really need to weight paint properly here. Ugh. Oh no. Why is it crashing? That's unfortunate. I'm gonna ask Felipe if he can open it in Blender. <clears throat> Let's uh, I'm gonna send this over to Felipe and see if he can open it. If he can, I, I might need him to export it. Where's Charlotte? Good grief, she's not even here. What? <coughs> That's crazy. Where are you? <sighs> She's not even here. What? Okay, there she is. That's we got metadata, but it's not pasting the actual FBX. Okay, I'm going to have, could be the downloads folder. Um, let's try and open up the, this one here. So it's in, uh, I'm going to have to dig around inside of a, my project folder, which I hate doing. This, you just have to look for it. Nope. Let me see if it'll open for Felipe. So let's go ahead and work on um, Tiny while we wait. Might need Blender for, oh, that's why. We need to update Blender. Because it's a 4.1 file. Okay. How do I update Blender? Does anybody know?
Might just need to download it. One sec, guys. Blender 1. Point, uh, or 4.1. Sure, sure, sure. Let's download it really quick. And while we wait for that, let's take a look at Tiny and see if Tiny needs to be repainted. Never mind. Okay. So we have Charlotte, and we're gonna take these lights and put them into Tiny. Tiny's animator is terrible. Remove that. And uh, he has the editor look at target, good. We're gonna put it inside of his neck, head, there we go. And I believe if we start with the key light here, yeah, the key light's there. So we bring it forward. Oh yeah, there we go. Awesome. Now, if we go to our animations, we'll bring in this animator component and put it on the armature. Maybe, I think it's just this actually. Base component. And he should play. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So Tiny's good. Um, he should look at the target. Yeah. Good. And his eyes should as well. But we also need that animation script as well. Project setup is so important. Um, like I could start doing screenshots right now and I could start creating marketing material and all that, but I want a perfect setup so that I never have to stress. I want it to be perfect. And that way we can create a list of all the screenshots we need and then just bang, 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 get them all. Yeah, you can also up keep Blender updated with Steam. I just haven't done it yet. All right, how are we doing? Okay, his eyes are all effed up. Oh, geez. Where is your eyes, Tiny? <sighs> his eyes are all effed up. Let's see if we can do it in the editor. They're all screwed up. For some reason, the eyes work great here. On the main menu, they don't. Good, they're nice and balanced there. Let's see if that fixed it. Good. Okay, I'll take it. All right, do we need to fix your chin, buddy? Looks like we do. Shoulders aren't great, but we're not going to have a ton of <coughs> screenshots of his shoulder. We just have to be very, very, like, like I said earlier at the beginning of this stream, game is wrapping up, so there's only so much you can fix. His chin seems fine. Um, Charlotte, in particular, really needs her chin to be fixed. So we're going to go in and do some plastic surgery. All right, ready? Let's go ahead and get a blender installed. I remember you saying in one of your recent podcasts that you asked your publisher to change your game name. Was it for this? Uh, yeah, but we didn't. We ended up not doing it because they brought they brought up some good points. I was gonna change the name to well something else. <laughs> um, yeah, 
Okay, let's go ahead and uh, um, get Blender opened, Blender 4.1. The reason why, by, by the way, the reason this is happening is because Felipe updated to 4.1 on his end, and I forgot to do it on my end. And so all the models updated to 4.1 on his side. All right, you guys ready? Okie dokie, here we go. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Uh, floor point one is. Oh, okay, so Felipe said it finally loaded. Um, let's see. Okay, mine is not responding in 4.1. So let us see here what's going on. So it's loading on his end. Maybe we need to re-import the model in Unity or something. I don't know. We can try. Um, but let's go ahead and see if we can do like a cool stance for Tiny. We might need to download a bunch. I wonder if we can download all of the animations from Mixamo. That would be so great. So you have a huge library of just a ton of animations. Cause I'm not sure, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we have a cool idle state holding chainsaw that might might be cool so play and take a look so that's an attack I wonder why he's attacking what that's weird What animation is that? Hmm. Lots of things that are confusing me today, guys, but that's the way it goes, right? Can you crawl? No, look, guys. <coughs> Can't. That's crazy. For some reason, he's attacking. Oh, it's because of uh, what's happening? There are so many things that are confusing me right now. This NPC here, for some reason, this is not working. Uh, and only that animation, what on earth? Look, attack one, so it's not playing it for some reason. Um, Thomas, well, no, what? I don't get it. Okay, I'm out of juice. I don't know what's happening here. If we hit play, he's attacking. Thomas, I gave you a script to download all Mixamos in one shot. This is a null script. Well, let's we'll do that in just a sec. For some reason, he's not playing the like. If I want him to do a, a samba here, crawl one. Okay, he's crawling now. I don't know what was going on there, but okay. Oh, it's because it wasn't included. There he is. But his eyes are screwed up now. Let's see and make sure that that's because of the editor look at target. There we go.
Hey, Tiny. What you doing over here? All right, he works. Um, yay, Charlotte opened. Give it just a sec, guys. Not sure why she took forever. Okay, so who is the blender? Who in the chat is a blender weight painting guru? Anybody? But let's go to object mode. What is that? Uh, pose mode. And you select that and then this, right? You select object mode. You select that and then you select that. And then you go to weight paint. You could see here that her eyes, we're not worried about her eyes. What is it? How do you select? There we go. Okay. Yay. Okay. So we need to go to gradient mode here. It's so simple. Just, just do this and then leave Thomas. Do that. Get out of weight paint mode. I hate weight paint mode. And then we're going to go to weight zero. Make sure that didn't screw it up. <coughs> and that was her, let's double check her neck. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, let's go to <coughs> pose mode. Okay, so her neck is a little, I don't know. I would rather her neck follow us than her head. But I think, yeah, what we'll do is go to weight paint mode here. Select her head and we're going to remove some of that weight paint down here. I think that'll do donkey. And then we'll do weight here. Good, just like that. And then obviously we got a front mode here. Weight painting is tricky, guys. It is tricky. And the way to test a weight paint is to just go nuts in pose mode. That looks about right. The neck is screwed up now. Let's go back in time. I think it was fine how it was. Object mode, pose mode. As long as we do the neck and that's the rotation point and we don't rotate her head, I think we're good. How about those shoulders? Kind of feel. Kind of feel like we need to. Have this. Do you think that should pull more down with the shoulders guys? A little bit more weight here on our shoulder. It's such a painful process. It could be that the bone, but I think it's fine, honestly. We're not gonna do too much here. See, I don't like that. I guess it's fine. Okay, well, let's clear the pose. There she is, and we're gonna go ahead and export. I really wish we could save this as a blend file. We're gonna save it as a blend file. Might as well. But we're gonna make sure we name her properly. 
to Charlotte Blend. No, it's not worth it. We have so much to do. We're going to export her as an FPX. Uh, bookmarks. Let's add a bookmark. Remove that. Twisted Tower. Unity. Assets. Art. We're going to do it here. Unity. Assets. Add bookmark. There we go. Okay. Um, NPCs. Charlotte. And we're going to call her Charlotte FBX. Good luck. You're going to need it. I bet you she's not going to import properly. I guarantee you. What did I freaking tell you? <coughs> Come on. Do we have a missing? Nope, nothing's missing. Okay. We're officially going to do a blend file. Woo! So, this sucks. You know what we're going to do? Got to have it. We got to get this working. Walker functionless. I'm going to need custom eyes for Charlotte. So we're going to stick it inside of the Walker function list. This new, we're going to create a blend file from her. We're going to use Blender. Let her load. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put her inside of this. And then the, the, the problem is the eyes. Um, that's the real problem. I don't want to have to redo the eyes because eyes are a pain to get set up in Unity, or at least the way I did it. But let's go ahead and just open up Walker Functionless here. And what I'm going to do is actually go to our Walker And I know, I know that we need Charlotte to be able to be a walker. So we're gonna go ahead and get her set up. Charlotte. Blend, there she is. Drag her in, <coughs> zero out of position. And then now we can put it right here, skin mesh merger, drag in the correct armature. Whoops. And then also model to adapt. Oh my word, that sucks. There's gotta be a reason why that happened. We are so close. Okay, there she is. But for some reason, I don't think that's gonna work. It's cause she's not a child. Hang on. She's there, she's right there. She's set to one. <clears throat> Something's happening here. This is so finicky. Nope. Is it the rotation values? Is I think it's the rotation values. Zero, 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 zero. So what we need to do, object, transform. Let's take a look at our transform values, see what's going on. Currently the rotation is set to, yep, yeah, we need to set the rotation, transform, uh, apply rotation. Let's just do that first. Sorry guys, I can't really explain what's going on here. It can be pretty awful though. Whew. 
We're going to discard those changes. We're going to go back to the scene here. Man, it's such a pain. Uh, it's because it's just because I don't understand stuff sometimes, guys. That's all it is. Okay, so for some reason she's rotating, um, and that's that's odd to me. Because if she's applied, what about this? Apply all transforms. Save. Go back to Unity here. <clears throat> I should be able to just drag her in onto the floor, and she should be standing. But she's not. That's crazy. Where did you go? That's so crazy. Um, refresh. Reimport Charlotte. Okay, so we just have eyes. Go back in time. We are so close. Whoa. What? Okay, there she is. What we're going to try and do <clears throat> is bring her back. We need to put her inside of this armature here. But look, notice how our scale's all screwed up. Um there she is, okay. We're gonna adapt this model. Man, this is tough. Um, there she is right there. We gotta find the right one, guys. Okay, that didn't do it. Armature, that. nope, that's not it. You gotta pick the right ones, you know? I think, it, I think we did it. No, she's not adapted. She, oh man, I don't think she is. If we delete this, she flips. Why? So close. Let's open up. Um, we're gonna open up the Teddy here. He's set to negative ninety. They're all set to negative ninety when you import them. I think I've got this. Well, let's let's double check something here. Uh, if we delete that, does she animate at all? That's the question. No, she does not. So there's something going on with the, okay, so it could be, I think I got it. It could be that this needs to be called armature. Um, let's see here. No, oh, it is. Let's, let's compare that the, the hierarchy structure to, let's say, the teddy bear. Because sometimes there's a hierarchy structure issue. So there's the teddy. It says armature, teddy bear. Can I do it with the teddy? Drag the teddy here, skin mesh merger, drag that in and then the teddy bear. So he's good, he's good. So let's double check something here. Let's get the size right though. So what you have to do, it's such a pain. Uh, what you have to do is drag it into the armature here uh, and, and then, <coughs> let's disable her. I'm just checking to see if something's not wrong with the script itself. Here's the process. Drag in the parent armature to the parent. And he should. It's not working. Hmm. Yeah, it's not working. I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, armature, do it again. There we go, okay. So it's the second one down. We need to adapt to this. Anything, the thing that has the uh, the animation on it, that's the one we, we, we set it to. So we're gonna take Charlotte. We'll 
blend. Drag her into, there we go, she's good there. Then you take the skin to mesh merger and you adapt it to that. So strange. I don't get it. I couldn't tell you guys. Let's take the eyes and delete the eyes. Maybe that's the problem, right? Crazy. They're about they they're almost identical in how the blend file is. That's crazy. Okay, so there's the Teddy. Let's bring him back and let's examine what we're doing here. Adapting it to that armature and then the Teddy parent. Merge skins, there he goes. His scale is set to one one one, his rotation is zero zero zero. The hips are, okay, so let's double check here. Bring in Charlotte Blend, and Teddy is, to be sure, the Teddy Bear is a blend file. Yes, he is. So he's a blend file. So what's going on? No idea. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see the exact structure here. By the way, if you guys haven't downloaded any of my free stuff below, there's a ton of free stuff below, like how to get six figures with just a demo, which I've done multiple times. Um, how to make a 3D game, how to, uh, there's a 2D game kit as well that I use to make a game for PewDiePie, so check out that below if you're interested. It's totally free, no gimmicks. Okay, th there's Charlotte, right? She's set to 000, 111. The armature is set to 111. That one is set to 0.01. Mm, there we go. So we need to set the armature itself to 111 in scale. Pose, clear all. Pose, apply, or transform. Ah. Look at that. Scale is set to 1. Okay. Object, apply, scale. Set that to one. All right, let's drag her back in here. There she is. Let's compare our structure here. One, one, one. One, one, one. That should be good. Whew. Model to it, let's try it again. <laughs> Armature, Charlotte, merge. It didn't do it. It didn't do it. Did I do the second one or the first one? What did I do? I did the first one. Thomas, you got to grow up, dude. <gasps> Yay. There she is. <coughs> okay, her eyes got popped out, which is great. Bring Charlotte into the graphics. There she is. We're going to call this Charlotte. The eyes. Teddy, we don't need. Hey, Charlotte, what you doing? There's her eyes way back there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add these to the head. We have a lot of custom stuff inside the head here. I'm going to call these. Charlotte uh, optional eyes and disable those. And then we can delete them uh, in all the walkers and stuff. But for the Charlotte one in particular, we can, we can keep them. But we're going to have those there for now. And then we're going to <coughs> disable this. There's Charlotte. Let's grab her um, proper clothing and her eyes. 
Same is true for here. And then we can bring those. Now you'll notice that those are following, actually, I don't believe they're following the skin. Okay, great, really great. <laughs> That's hilarious, hey, we're close guys. I wonder why, there we go, right there. I think the scale is correct though, so that's good. All right, so does she animate properly? The eyes aren't moving for some reason. What are these? What are these? Wait, what? What are those? What are those? I believe those, I can't select them. What are those? If I disable them, what happens? Okay, so there's eyes somewhere. <laughs> Let's save it. Uh, make sure in the default walker, though, we keep everything. Look at this. Look. I think it might be because... Yeah, okay, good. It's because of the previous object. Okay, so there's her eyes. We're going to disable her eyes for the walker. Um because we're inside of the walker right now. But we want all of the <coughs> characters to be, excuse me, rigged up to those graphics. All right, save it. Um, all righty. Oh yeah, let's go to our, this is just, I don't need to explain this because it's just silly, but we're gonna delete Charlotte for the walker when the walker loads. So now we have Walker functionless, and now we can make it Charlotte if we want, but you'll notice her eyes don't work, right? And so that's why you need to make sure that you enable her eyes. And then you can make those eyes follow, right? Does she look a little off to you? Let's see here. You know who she looks like? She kind of looks like she's Selena Gomez. Maybe they may need to make them a little bit wider. Yeah. Now let's double check the animation. We want her chin. <coughs> okay, I think we're good. Um, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the actual eyes here, and you'll notice that they have a look constraint on them. Um, and all we need to do, um, yeah, yeah, okay. So we need to go to the armature here. Wait, what is this? That seems to be added. I'm going to revert all this here. Oh. <gasps> Apply. Something happened to. We have our key lights. We don't really need those in the functionless one. I'm just sitting here thinking out loud, guys. Um. What we're going to do is take the eyes, um, copy component. These are the look constraints. So these are what make the eyes move, right? Paste component as new. And that was the left eye. Let's do the right eye as well. And so these will make, these will follow the camera. Whoops. Take that look constraint and have it follow the camera, okay? And then um, also <clears throat> just in play, like in the actual gameplay, what we wanna do is when we're playing the game, we want it to follow actually the player. But in this case, there is no player. So it's gonna default to, to following the, uh, 
the look target. Paste component as new. So that's going to just not do anything in this case. Um, now we also want the head here. Let, let's grab this editor look target here and, and add it to the walker function list. There's our look target. And um, now what we can do is go to the eyes and make sure they're looking at the proper target. Also the neck. Uh-oh. The walker we want to also look at the look target. Paste component as new. There we go. And in game, yeah, I kind of want it to be optional for her to look at the player. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the old one here. I know this is really, it could be confusing if you've never done something like this. So I apologize. We're almost done with this stupid stuff. All right, so now we can go ahead and delete that Charlotte. Um, apply all. Good, okay. So, whoo, that was some work, guys. So there's the editor look target. Why on earth? There we go. I can't zoom out for some reason. Let's take a look. The speed of our camera movement should be, oh my goodness, it slowed down for some reason. Okay. Um, all right, so let's take a look. She's looking at the camera, her eyes. What about her eyes? Now the head, what we're going to do with the head, this is cool. We could take the head or the neck here and we can change the weight to be much smaller, like 0.4. And then the eyes we can make much stronger. So that way you can actually make it so that her eyes kind of look out of the corner. Whoa, 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 whoa. What on earth? But you'll notice there's a, it's a little too high there. So we're gonna create an offset value for her eyes. So there's an offset, we're gonna do zero. Save, walker functionless, apply all. So now guys, look at, look. So you can take a look at her eyes here and as we move, the eyes can look out of the corner, which is really cool. It creates some like creepy shots. Maybe let's make her head pointed down a little bit by default. So eyes, or head, 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 neck. Um, do a little bit of a, yeah, there we go. And hopefully this works for everybody. Why does the, Oh my word, Unity! Oh, it keeps changing. That looks good. Not a huge fan of that roll. I got an arch there. But I think that's because of the, I think maybe she's looking down a little too much. Good. <sighs> this is not pre-recorded, John. I'm just, Super focused, all right? Okay. Yeah, so the model, I did not do the model. The model is um, was contracted, and that was a guy named Bryn Morrison Davis. I think that's what the last name is. Bryn is awesome. He did a really good job. All right, so let's see how the animation looks, okay? Whew. Let's do a little samba dance. How You wanna do a samba dance? Those shoulders, man. I think her shoulder bones are just too far out, you know? But. That neck. Let's see here, what kind of, uh, what about just the dancing twerk? Those shoulders. As long as she doesn't have her, wow, we gotta figure out those shoulders, man. Uh-oh. Let's make the look, let's turn off the look constraint here and see if that's causing the problem.
<coughs> those shoulders, dude. It, as long as she looks decent in idle, I'm not a huge, I don't have a huge issue. Why is her neck so forward? Shuffling. That's not terrible. What about sitting? How do I fix those shoulders? They're just so far out. You know? It's because we're adapting her model to the enemy rig, and that's the problem. That doesn't look bad. Is there a sit one? Come on, tell me there's a sit. How do we fix that, guys? That's the question. I think it's just because her shoulders. <coughs> right arm and left arm. Okay, we might be able to fix it this way. So right arm and then left arm. Okay, that one we can't do. That one we can't do. That one we can't do. Okay, th that's what it is. Um, how do we offset those values? Yeah, the, 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 the shoulders are... She's not properly adapted to those shoulders. You know, that's, that's the problem. Um, I wonder if we could do an override of some kind. But the enemies look fine, it's just her. She's definitely problematic. You know what I'm gonna do? This is gonna be a potentially a weird solution. I'm gonna take this mesh We're gonna see if this does it, okay? We're gonna squash the mesh. That won't do it. <coughs> how, do we, how do we fix this? Um, they're not bad there. I don't, I, guys, I don't think it's the, the weight painting. I don't. I think it's the rig. Cool thing is, is it updates from Blender. Um, man, we were so close, guys. I think the bone is just extending really far out like that. So. We need to move her shoulders in. And I'm not sure how we do it. Is there a way to override the position of, of a rig? You know? That's what I'm, I'm wondering about here. Yeah, the animations for the shoulders. We need, we need that data. I mean, if you, uh, like if I took that shoulder, I can move in. The left shoulder and I don't know why let's see here 
it doesn't have a, a, a rotation or a position value, but the right shoulder, the right shoulder doesn't have a position value either. Okay, so for that animation in particular, we can fix it. See? It doesn't look bad. <laughs> when, she, when she goes up, though, it looks bad. But that's not terrible. Um, but let's look at all the other animations. Um, cheering. Actually, did that just solve it? I may have just solved it, and I don't know why, because I wasn't able to. Uh... That's not terrible. Let's look and see if the right shoulder has a positional value. OK, so the right shoulder doesn't have a positional value. <laughs> and neither does the left shoulder. So I can pull them in, or I could do something like this. Let's see here, pulling it in is probably all we need to do. Right shoulder and left shoulder. Maybe pull them down a little bit. Hmm. But also the right arm itself has a positional value. Let's see here. Right arm itself. <coughs> okay, the right arm shoulder, the right arm and, sh and sh the shoulder and the left arm and shoulder don't have positional values in their animation. And that's good news because we can change it, I think. So let's give it a go. If we hit play here, I'm trying to see if I actually changed the values. Look at that. Okay, so let's go back in time and take a look at the <coughs> various overrides here. Um, We're going to revert this because I don't know what those values are doing. Um, let's hit play. Okay, and just see if it's back to where it was because now I know I can change the, her shoulders to not be so wide. There's also potential to change the scale of the chest. That could do it. No, we, we, I think it's the shoulders. Spine two. Yeah, we need to change the shoulders. Okay, so let's bring the left shoulder and the right shoulder in, but only for her, okay? That's the trouble. So what we need to do is walker, functionless, Charlotte. We're gonna revert all those, and then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna create a new variant from that so that Charlotte's has a unique set of shoulders. I think it might just be the arms. Let's try it. Left arm, bring it in. Not too much, just like that. The right arm, bring it in. And then her shoulder. We can actually just hit play on any of these and just see how it looks. Not bad. Can we bring her, bring the, no, I don't think we want to bring the shoulders down much. Okay. I think that's fine. <laughs> that's right, Project Patty. Oh, man. I think she's all right, honestly. Um, let's go ahead and apply those changes to her. 
So now we have Charlotte. Now, uh, uh, the, the pose she's probably going to end up doing is... Surely we have one where she's sitting. <sighs> I thought we did. Um, <clears throat> Charlotte NPC, I think her animations are inside of her folder. The old animations I was using. Okay, we don't have that anymore. Charlotte blend. I think they're in here. There we go. Well, dang it. Sitting and standing, good. Okay, those are the only two we're gonna need. So this is gonna be female sitting, female standing. And we're gonna put those inside of the um, that folder. See? There we go. Good, good, good. I'm just going to name them one just to keep naming conventions proper. <clears throat> okay. So if we do the standing one, it should just be a nice pose of her standing. But of course, it's not doing it. Why on earth? Oh, that's because we need to include them. This is so annoying. See, this is why I don't like Unity sometimes. Uh, there we go. These two. <clears throat> that should do it. Good. Okay. So if we were to do a pose, a screenshot, it'd be something like this. The problem is she's always leaning far back and I could never figure it out. Why are you doing that? That's so weird. I don't know why you're <laughs> why are you standing like that? Um, let's see what happens with the other guys. Like this princess. They're all standing super far back. I guess it's that pose, right? Let's see if we can find a better one on Mixamo. Mixamo! Freaking can't log in here. Excuse me. Alrighty. So we're gonna upload. Um, our character. One sec. I'll, I'll share my screen in just a sec, guys. Ooh. One sec, guys. Okay, Charlotte FBX uploading. This is gonna be the one that's not rigged or weight painted properly, but that's okay because we're just gonna be downloading the rig. I mean, frankly, I wish we could just download all the animations, which we might do. Um, is it possible? Let's Let's see here. <laughs> Download all Mixamo animations for Unity. Nope, doesn't exist. All right, let's see here. Okay, 
Idol. We just need a normal female idol. She just, look at that. She leans back and it bugs me. That's much better. Yay. Okay, let's download that one. And we're going to do FBX for Unity without the skin. We're going to download that. That way we can just bring this animation in to our folder. Atmos Games. Art. Where are animations? Oh boy, I forgot. We're just going to put it in Charlotte's folder for now. There's an idle stance. Laying. That one would be cool. There's a lot of them we could grab here. These will be for like cool like uh, posters throughout the game. Look at that. Download that one. And these are just static poses, you know. <laughs> so we can just use them for photos. What about smoking? Oh, we have one with smoking. That's good. Nah, I think we're good for now. All right, you guys ready? So those are now gonna be imported, right? So we're just gonna go where Charlotte is. And we have all these animations that downloaded, right? And so what we're gonna do <coughs> is just, we don't need, I, th I don't think we need that anymore, but anyway. Duplicate that one, duplicate that one, duplicate that one. What is this one? Duplicate that one. This is gonna be called Female Idol. So those are great. And then we're gonna to go to our animation here. See how painful this is? <coughs> Put all these in here. Now there was this one we don't love. So we're gonna delete that one. We have pose. And we just want to set them all to loop, right? And now, we'll add them to your animator. So many pro things you have to do here. And we just want this one that we can use for a variety of different screenshots. There's Charlotte. And let's set up the proper animation here. I don't know what that's for. We're going to remove that. And then go ahead and just drag in our new animation, which is female idle. Is it? Is that what it is? I don't think that one's even included. There she is. Wait, no, no, no. That's the one we hate. Dang it. I think. <coughs> Is that one bad? Let's see here. I think it's fine. I don't know if that's the one we, we, we did though. 
Hmm. Female, idle. My brain hurts. <coughs> There's so many files. I think we got them all. Uh, but we don't need these anymore. So we can delete all these. What is this one? Standing. Yeah, that's not it. So we can delete all those. Okay. So we can get some cool screenshots of Charlotte. Let's double check and be sure that this is true. What we're going to do is hit play here. And then there's the editor look at target. Bring it down. Yeah, we definitely need some offset for her head. Yeah. So let's go to her head. Um, the neck. And do a little bit more of an offset. There we go. So 6.7 is the value we want. Or zero, honestly. We could just do zero and then hit play. And you can create some cool like effects. Like you could do like really high like that, and then you could go to her neck and do this. And then turn it away like that. And so this would be a cool screenshot. Right? And this is what I mean by the highlights being so important. So you can take the high, the rim light, the blue one, and you can like, uh, let's see here, reposition, so it was like that and crank up the intensity. See, does that make sense guys? And just create a cool rim light effect. Now the problem is I hope that the green screen doesn't affect that, right? Uh, the key light, we need a little bit more shadow on the right side of her face. Remember guys, with three point lighting, you wanna have a nice, sh always look for that shadow from the nose. If you're not seeing it, you're not doing it right. So there's this. You bring that down a little bit. There we go. Look how moody. And that is what we needed, guys. Thank goodness. Do a nice big full screen screenshot. Zoom in a little bit. But you don't want to zoom in too much because it can cause sort of a fisheye look. So we're going to do this. Bring it into Photoshop. And now we have a screenshot to use with our Charlotte. Isn't that cool? That is what we wanted, guys. Eyes are a little bit, you know, in the corner of her eye, but, <clears throat> and then you can create like advertisements and stuff. So the way you would do that is you could do like, uh, watch this, you could do a posterize effect like that. Um, then you could merge all that together, copy it, paste it and then you could do like a um, a oil paint effect that drop it down a little bit you want to make sure the weird parts don't look weird <laughs> right that's a good rule that's a good trick and then yeah 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 stuff like this background here it's a little bit too silly looking and then something you can do is add a noise um, so if you do like a gray heavy noise um, noise add noise crazy amount of noise do a uh, darken and then this is one of my favorite things to do to make it look more like it's cartoon or like it's an advertisement. And also you can do a drop shadow. Uh, like this. 
we'll drop the noise down just a tad. And then uh, um, the gradient map is a really cool effect. It makes it look a little bit more retro. So we could do like the mid-tones being yellow, the highlights being more of a vibrant yellow. But you want to do a, a you definitely want to do a color shift from one color to another. So you could do this. This one you're going to actually do a little bit more towards the green, and then this one would be dark green, like that. Wait, what? Why isn't it working? I don't know why it's not working. I think we're, we need to flip it. There we go. Ha! <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? So there we go. Just drop down the opacity a little bit. And you've got to vintage looking poster. Let me show you guys something here. <coughs> This is so cool. Get ready. You could take a paper texture like this, put it underneath, and now you could say something like um, your wish or your dreams will come true. Because we're trying to do some more like Disney type stuff. Dreams will come true. Be careful. Where is that? Oh, it's that. Let's we'll do a fade out. Your dreams. Will come true. <coughs> Stuff like that, you know. Cool little advertisements. Um, another thing you can do with the gradient map is you could sort of fade out certain parts, you know, stuff like this. Isn't that cool? And then you do one big old fat um, oil paint and sort of just fade it over a little bit. Not too much though, just enough. Pretty cool, huh guys? And then do a little color colorization to make some sepia. And you have advertisements you can use for your game. Isn't that cool? See, that's what this whole freaking morning was about, which is getting our characters screenshotable. And now it's gonna be super fast getting screenshots done. Does that make sense? Thanks for hanging out, guys. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. If you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love you too.